hi. I'm so happy to see you. Good evening, good day, good morning, good night. Everything is good. You know that. Let's have a little bit more of Terry Pratchett's gads, gads, shall we? And yes, you'll see that Mr. S does a story Mr. S also forgets to charge up his new microphone. Tonight is the first job I'm doing when I when I take this off, I promise. And then back to normal tomorrow. Back to work tomorrow. Back to work tomorrow too. I'm a bit, I'm a, I'm a bit miserable tonight because it's back to work. I've had a lovely two weeks off. Now I'm back to work. But it's okay. That's okay. Every, all good things come to an end. And of course going to work is good as well. <laughs> the patrician was having a difficult lunchtime. Gentlemen, he snapped, I don't really see what else there is to do. The assembled civic leaders muttered amongst themselves. It's at times like this, it's traditional that a hero comes forth, said the president of the Guild of Assassins. I can't remember if that was the first voice we used for him or not. Anyway, a dragon slayer, where is he? That's what I want to know. Why aren't our, chick oh, why aren't our schools turning out young people with the kind of skill society needs? Fifty thousand dollars doesn't sound much said the chairman of the Guild of Thieves. It may not be much to you, my dear sir, but it is all the city can afford, said the patrician firmly. I know if it doesn't afford any more, then I don't think there'll be a city for long, said the thief. And what about trade, said the representative of the Guild of Merchants. People aren't going to sail it with a cargo of rare cosmetics. Comestibles just to have it incinerated now, are they? Gentlemen, gentlemen, the patrician raised his hands in a conciliatory fashion. It seems to me, he went on, taking advantage of the brief pause, that what we have here is a strictly magical phenomena. I would like to hear from our learned friend on this point. Hmm? Someone nudged the Arch-Chancellor of Unseen University, who had nodded off. Hey, hey. What? said the wizard, startled into wakefulness. We were just wondering, said the patrician loudly, what you were intending to do about this dragon of yours. The Arch-Chancellor was old, but a lifetime of survival in the world of competitive wizardry and the Byzantine politics of Unseen University meant that he could whip up a defensive argument in a split second. You didn't remain Arch-Chancellor for long if he'd let that sort of ingenious remark whiz past your ear. M my dragon, he asked. It is well known that the great dragons are extinct, said the patrician briskly. And besides, their natural habitat was definitely rural. So it seems to me that this one must be match. With respect, Lord Vetinari, said the Arch-Chancellor, it has been claimed that dragons are extinct. But the current evidence, if I may be so bold tends to cast a certain doubt on the theory. As to habitat, what we are seeing here is simply a change of behaviour pattern occasioned by the spread of urban areas into the countryside which has led many hitherto rural creatures to adopt, nay, in many cases to positively embrace, a more municipal mode of existence, and many of them thrive on the new opportunities thereby open up to them. For example, foxes are always knocking over my dustbins. He beamed. He'd managed to get all the way through it without actually needing to engage his brain. Oh no, I've forgotten the assassin's voice now. I, I, are you saying, said the assassin slowly, that what we've got here is the first civic dragon? Ah, that's evolution for you, said the wizard happily. It should do well too. Plenty of rent nesting sites and a more than adequate food supply. Silence greeted this statement until the merchant said, Oh, uh, what? What exactly is it that they do eat? The thief shrugged. Oh, I seem to recall stories about virgins changed to eat, eat rocks, he volunteered. We'll starve round here then. <laughs> We're all on loam. <laughs> they, they, they used to go around ravening, said the thief. Don't know if that's any help. Anyway, said the leader of the merchants. Anyway, said the leader of the merchants. It seems to be your problem again, my lord. 
Five minutes later, the patrician was striding the length of his op office, fuming. Thank goodness all those voices have gone. <laughs> they were laughing at me. I could tell, said the patrician. Did uh, you suggest a working party? said once. Of course I did. I, it didn't do the trick this time. You know, I really am inclined to increase the reward money. I don't think that would work, my lord. Any proficient monster slayer knows the rate for the job. Ha! Half the kingdom, muttered the patrician. And your daughter's hand in marriage? I suppose my aunt isn't acceptable, the patrician said, hopefully. Tradition demands a daughter, my lord, the patrician nodded gloomily. Perhaps we can buy it off. Are dragons intelligent? I believe the word traditionally is cunning, my lord said once. I understand they have a liking for gold. Really? What do they spend it on? They sleep on it, my lord. What? Do you mean in a mattress? No, my lord. On it. The patrician turned this fact over in his mind. Don't they find it rather knobbly? He said. So I would imagine, sir. I don't suppose anyone has ever asked. Hmm. Can they talk? They're apparently good at it, my lord. Hmm, interesting. The patrician was thinking, if it can talk, it can negotiate. If it can negotiate, then I have it by the short, by the small scales, or whatever they have. And they are said to be silver-tongued, said once. The patrician leaned back in his chair. Only silver, he said. There was the sound of muted voices in the passageway outside, and Vimes was ushered in. Ah, captain, said the patrician. What progress? I'm um, sorry, my lord, said Vimes, as the rain dripped off his cape. Toward apprehending this dragon, said the patrician firmly. The wading birds, said Vimes. You know very well what I mean, said Veterinary sharply. Investigations are at hand, said Vimes automatically. The patrician snorted. <laughs> All you have to do is find its lair. Once you have the lair, you have the dragon. That's obvious. Half the city seems to be looking for it. If there is a lair, said Vimes, once looked up sharply. Why do you say that? We are considering a number of possibilities, said Vimes woodenly. If it has no lair, where is it spending its days? Inquiries are being pursued, said Vimes. Then pursue them with alacrity and find the lair, said Patrician sourly. Yes, sir. Permission to leave, sir? Very well. But I shall expect progress by tonight. Do you understand? Now, why did I wonder if it has a lair? Vimes thought, as he stepped out into the daylight in the crowded square. Because it didn't look real, that's why. If it isn't real, it doesn't need to do anything we expect. How can it walk out of an alley that it didn't go into? Once you've ruled out that impossibility, then whatever is left, however improbable, must be the truth. The problem lay in working out what was impossible, of course. That was the trick, all right. There was also the curious incident of the orangutan in the night time. By day, the library buzzed with activity. Vimes moved through it diffidently. Strictly speaking, he could go anywhere in the city, but the university had always held that it fell under thaumaturgical law, and he felt it wouldn't be wise to make the kind of enemies where you were lucky to end up the same temperature let alone the same shape. He found the librarian hunched over his desk. The ape gave him an expectant look. Haven't found her yet, sorry, said Vimes. Inquiries are, in Inquiries are continuing, but there is little help you can give me. Ooh. Well, this is a magical library, right? I mean, these books are sort of intelligent, isn't that so? So I've been thinking, I bet if I got in here at night, they'd soon kick up a fuss because they don't know me. But if they did know me, they'd probably not mind. So whoever took the book would have to be a wizard, wouldn't they? Or someone who works for the university at any rate. The librarian glanced from side to side, then grasped Vime's hand and led him into the seclusion of a couple of bookshelves. Only then did he nod his head. Someone they know. A shrug, then another nod. That's why you told us, isn't it? Ooh. Not the University Council. Whew. Any idea who it could be? The librarian shrugged, a decidedly expressive gesture for a body which was basically a sack between a pair of shoulder blades. 
Well, there's something. Let me know if any other strange things happen, won't you? Fimes looked up at the bank of shelves. Stranger than usual, I mean. Whew. Thank you. It's a pleasure to meet a citizen who regards it as their duty to assist the watch. The librarian gave him a banana. Fimes felt curiously elated as he stepped out into the city's throbbing streets again. He was definitely detecting things. They were little bits of things, like a jigsaw. None of them made any real sense, but they all hinted at a bigger picture. All he needed to do was find a corner or a bit of an edge. He was pretty certain it wasn't a wizard, whatever the librarian might think. Not a proper paid-up wizard. This sort of thing wasn't their style. And there was, of course, this business about the lair. The most sensible course would be to wait and see if the dragon turned up tonight and try and see where. That meant a high place. Was there some way of detecting dragons themselves? He had a look at Cut Me Own Throat Dibbler's dragon detectors, which consisted solely of a piece of wood on a metal stick. When the stick was burned through, you'd found your dragon. Like a lot of Cut Me Own Throat's devices, it was completely efficient in its own special way, while at the same time being completely useless. There had to be a better way of finding a thing than waiting until your fingers were going to get burned off. Hmm... Must up there for tonight. It's a sensible place. Well, ooh, I nearly forgot. Hang on. <laughs> Story's over. All right. Thanks very much for listening. Signing off. Unless you want to stick around for a little bit of chitter chatter. Uh, Tomorrow's back to work. I've told you that already. I am not miserable about going to work because I can't wait to see the kids. I, I can't. They're lovely kids and I can't wait to go and say hi to them all and see how they got on over their break, etc, etc. I think it's just I one of the reasons I became a teacher was because I know they have massive holidays. <laughs> you don't get to do like what well, you still have to work in the holidays, obviously. But um like huge chunks of time where you don't have to go into work you can you can do your work at home etc but one of the reasons one of the reasons i became a teacher was those massive holidays but of course with everything there comes a little bite in the bum with that have a weekend off uh, monday morning i <clears throat> gotta go back in have two weeks off and man alive it's hard to go back to work just to get yourself that little bit of gusto at least Going back on a Thursday is great. Friday, lush. Weekend. That should that should be okay. So, yeah. But even so, you can't help it, can you, when you've had a lovely two weeks off, especially over like a nice little bit of festive pe period, and then you have to go back. That's hard work. And also, normally, I'm awake with the lark. So I wake up at like four o'clock in the morning normally. Literally, for the last three days, I've, I've slept in till seven. <laughs> I can't do that tomorrow. So, um, it's going to come hard as well. Gosh. Anyway, that's tomorrow. Uh, I haven't really got anything else exciting to tell you. I'll tell you what, I did get through the post today. I've got to try and do this without, without doxing myself again. Uh, I think I'm safe. Look, I got a letter through the post today. <laughs> my google letter yay it came so um everything's up and running now i've got my this was a pin number from google they put like i said they have to put an amount less than 35 pence in your bank account and then you have to tell them how much they put in there so that happened this morning as well <gasps> so that's it my three stages of verification driver's license snail mail letter and less than 35p in my bank account there we are. The three stages have all come together. The triangulation of brilliantness has happened. So that's all right, isn't it? That's given me something good. I don't know what difference it will make, but that's further than I've ever been before. So um, that's good news, isn't it? Uh, let's think. No, I, got, I really haven't got anything else exciting to tell you. Uh, sent Phoebe off to a charity shop today. I stayed at home with the boys. She went off to the Chazza shop and um, I, she, I gave her a special task. Any other Terry Pratchett books? And I gave her a list of the ones that I had to get rid of before. Look for these. Look for any of these Stephen King books and any tarot card books. 
she didn't find a single one not a single one but there we go so that was that uh she has her and blake have gone back around their mums now so um but i'll see phoebe tomorrow morning and hopefully i'll see blake before he goes back to university he's left all of his guitar here and everything so i'm hoping that he's going to come back and get that before he goes uh all that remains for me to do tonight is have a shower pack my school bag and have an early night that's it all right okay well wishes to you all and i'll see you tomorrow night Bye.